Hey folks, this is James Tracy, memoryholeblog.org. And some observations uh, that have just come to light, at least for me, involve the probability that what is going to take place over the next several months is the implementation of a special pass that is related to one's biometric information, a digital pass, a pass that is also attached to a, a blockchain system, in other words, a type of permanent uh, record that is repeatedly confirmed by a network of, of computers or the equivalent. And uh, this is something that's going to be implemented and is being encouraged by uh, none other than the World Economic Forum which sets a lot of the agendas behind the scenes that we don't really see that prominently. We know that they are the uh, organization behind the uh, Davos Summit that takes place every year, the World Economic uh, Forum there. And um, there are just some things that have come to light, in particular a video that uh, was just recently released promoting the idea of this COVID pass. And um, let's go ahead and, and watch this, and then we can dig a little bit further into, uh, into this topic thereafter. So the video states uh, and shows at the beginning a, uh, a traveler who has a face mask on, right? So they're pitching this as the problem, and no doubt this is a problem. The travel industry and the tourism industry is down 70 to 80 percent now because of this worldwide uh, pandemic or plandemic. And uh, it goes on to explain how visually how you will be uh, asked to provide a sample of your blood. Now think of the vast amount of information that is available uh, via a, a simple drop of your blood, your DNA, your genetic history, uh, pretty much everything, uh, open an open book uh, to uh, the folks who are behind this, who will organize this uh, COVID pass. And one of the reasons they're doing this is because they found that contact tracing is not very popular. And they state that they need at least 50% of a specific national population uh, to participate, to volunteer for contact tracing. And a lot of people are just simply reluctant to do so. So another way of enforcing this new type of system, and I'll get to that in a moment, um, because this is part of a much broader plan, I would contend, is using this digital pass. And they go on to state, uh, th this can be presented at airline checkouts and um, borders. doesn't include tracing technology. See, they want to emphasize this as well, that the, there's no tracing technology involved. Uh, it preserves data privacy while saving time and money. Its creators say that using blood test data is 100% reliable. Well, I bet it is. Uh, but what types of uh, what types of information once again are is one releasing if their if if their their blood is attached to this pass which is attached to their phone and uh, and so forth could ensure only non-infectious people travel across borders well who's infectious and and who is not infectious given that the the testing itself for this coronavirus is it's is is suspect and uh, subject to serious questioning and um so th the gist of this video is that it's going to resolve this problem because we can't have people who are um, spreading the virus out there and um, you'll no longer need a mask because you'll have this pass and this uh, this clearance to go ahead and proceed with life as it once was so th this also ties in uh, carbon offsetting, so it commits to mandatory carbon offsetting. This is another element of, uh, of the agenda that's being forwarded by the World Economic Forum, the technocrats who uh, in many ways set the agenda for the entire planet. And it points out, as I noted, that global travel and tourism has been devastated 
and um, needs to be, of course, revived and that it's a real problem. This article that appears on one of the World Economic Forum's websites, uh, one of their blogs, and I'll have the links to this in the show notes, it states that uh, a new health passport app promised to, to promises to restore confidence to the travel industry, which has been hit, hit badly by the pandemic. Global tourism shrank by 97% in April of 2020, according to the UN World Tourism Organization. And here is the solution, COVID Pass. It's the brainchild of several individuals who the WEF uh, regards as the young global leaders from a number of different countries, five continents, it states. Unlike contract tracing apps, COVID Pass will not track users' movements. Non-mandatory contract tracing apps have met with only limited success so far due to privacy concerns. Germany, which is regarded as one of the most successful nations in rolling out a voluntary contract tracing contact tracing app, has only 16 million users out of a total of 83 million users, so about 20% or less. And of course, this is not going to not going to fly because people are concerned. Uh, many people are concerned about their about their privacy. A majority here, experts say that at least half of the population needs to use a contract tracing app, contact tracing app, to make it effective in fighting the virus. Meanwhile, governments are faced with a variety of different testing regimes to validate the health of travelers. Um, says one of the inventors here, it isn't enough to reassure tourists or health authorities. This has to be done uh, by actually collecting blood samples. And this will give you a pass or, or not uh, to, uh, to travel, um, travel globally. And this, of course, is being done now in a, in a transnational uh, plane. But um, it's likely something that will be done for national travel and then regional travel and then perhaps local travel. You know, we heard the stories about how communist nations, one of the ways that they controlled their populations was to regulate the travel of, the, of their citizens. And so one would have to get a pass, uh, just go from one town to another. And could this be a similar sort of endeavor uh, by the WEF? Looking elsewhere here on their website, um, COVID-19 is something that it, it, it arches over all of their platforms now. If you look at the, the World Economic Forum website, once again, the COVID-19 Action Platform, this is something that is, is up top here. And of course, this is uh, the COVID-19 is just something that came about over the past uh, several months, uh, early 2020. But now it is something that is seen as being involved in shaping all of these things. And look at the key word here in on this particular page of the WEF is shaping. Shaping the future of cities, shaping the future of cybersecurity, shaping the future of energy, the future of global public goods, the future of investing, the future of mobility, the future of tech governance, the future of tech uh, IOT, robotics, the new economy and society, the future of advanced manufacturing, the future of consumption, healthcare, financial and monetary, media, entertainment and culture, and so forth. And we look elsewhere here, uh, what the WEF foresees and is advocating uh, with quite certainly many of its um, partners who are our elected officials uh, throughout the United States and elsewhere throughout the world, it foresees and posits a fourth industrial revolution. And look at how COVID-19 figures here. It is, I think, um, uncoincidentally categorized alongside the future of health and health care and justice and law. And you'll see here how it's um, it is tied to ethics and identity, as well as agile technology governance. Now, this is something that um, these uh, technocratic uh, globalists who really do not 
care for or see national borders and nationalism itself as obstacles to their plans, this is what they foresee over the next uh, several years, the next decades, what they seek to, to implement along time, alongside uh, the United Nations and, uh, and the like. Well, something to keep in mind here and something of uh, real cause, I believe, uh, for concern as this COVID-19 coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic proceeds um, now and uh, in the coming weeks and months. This is James Tracy, MemoryHoldBlog.org. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.